OpenAI's O1 model has completely changed the way we look at chain of thought in large language models, specifically really big ones like those from OpenAI. And a lot of you have raised a really important point, which is that chain of thought, at least in a loop, is not necessarily a wildly new thing. People have been doing this with ChatGPT ever since ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo. Now, obviously, O1 is really good, and we know from their paper that most of this came from just continued training and not necessarily more data, which in itself is a really incredible advancement. And again, it shows that transformers are the dominant force in large language models, basically meaning that as long as you have enough power to run GPUs, however many of them you have, basically there probably aren't many problems that transformers can actually solve. Even if Terence Tao, which check out my other video on his thoughts on O1, basically told us that right now these models can really only solve serializable problems. But that said, what if someone wanted to try to recreate O1-like reasoning chains using a more common open source model that everyone can use with something like Llama 3170B? And then what if you actually plug that into Grok? Well, someone actually already did this and they're calling it G1. So this actually isn't employee at Grok, but this is basically a large language model developer who thought, huh, why don't I make a better implementation informed on some of the chain of thought methodologies we saw with L1, do it with Llama 3.170B, and then plug it all into Grok so it's really, really fast. I'm gonna get into how good this actually is compared to O1 and maybe doing this with GPT-4. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So one thing I should say is that, yes, this is not as good as O1. It gets close in certain areas, but obviously O1 is kind of a next generation foundational model. And yes, unfortunately, it is a little bit better than Llama 3170B. Now I will say it's incredibly fast and seeing projects like this put together with Grok are really cool. And we're hoping in the future to do some direct work with Grok I'm showcasing some really cool agentic things you can do. So what actually is this setup? So I'll link to their GitHub below, but they go over some really interesting attributes here. So as they describe this, G1 is using Llama 3170B on Grok to create O1-like reasoning chains. So basically thinking and passing information through a number of different agents or steps to then get your result. The reason you might actually use something like this is O1 is great, but I will say a lot of its results are kind of brittle and hard to trust all the time. So the idea that you would use an LLM like Llama 3170B or maybe a model that you fine tuned instead might get you better results in certain cases. For instance, I know certain people who can't use O1 for their applications because the results just aren't consistent enough yet. So he says that this is an early prototype of using prompting strategies to improve the LLM's reasoning capabilities through O1-like reasoning chains. This allows the LLM to think and solve logical problems that usually otherwise stump leading models. And by stump, he just means that you get an answer that's either completely gibberish or has nothing to do with the prompt you gave it. Uh, unlike O1, all the reasoning tokens are shown. Right now with O1, you just see kind of a breakdown of what step the tokens were used in, and it's also around six times more expensive than GPT-4, which is a really wild thing um, now that I'm digging more into the tokenomics of how this works. G1 is experimental and being open sourced to help inspire the open source community to develop new strategies and that produce O1-like reasoning. This experiment helps show the power of prompting reasoning in visualized steps, not a comparison or full replication of O1, which is a really important thing to note here, which uses different techniques. OpenAI's O1 is trained with large-scale reinforcement learning, or RL, uh, to reason using chain of thought, achieving state-of-the-art performance on obviously really complex problems. So G1 is just kind of a uh, demo or kind of an engineering sample that shows what you can actually do with Grok in order to overcome straightforward LLM logic issues like the strawberry problem, which for those of you who don't know, is when you ask a very complex model that can seemingly do programming and lots of other things, how many R's are in the word strawberry? And then you get an answer that's wrong, which is something that a very basic Python script loading them into a list could tell you. But again, what's really cool is allowing existing open source models to benefit from what this developer is calling dynamic reasoning chains and improved interfaces for exploring them. And the interfaces are the biggest parts here. So how does this model actually work? So there are a few examples here, but at a high level, the way this works is it's just Llama 3170B being deployed on Grok using what he is calling a dynamic chain of thought that allows the LLM to think a bit more about what it's giving you. So at each step, the LLM can choose to continue to another reasoning step or provide the final answer. And this is why in my video going over some of Terence Tao's thoughts, I mentioned kind of the idea of having a kind of amorphous or a just-in-time kind of defined definition of what confidence in an answer should be given a prompt, not necessarily just applied to all prompts. 
which is what a lot of these models used to do. Each step is titled and visible to the user, which is pretty cool. And the system prompt also includes tips for the LLM. So there are hints that are given along the way that can help it kind of work through a basic breakdown. And you can see this under prompt breakdown after you let it flow through the model, which I'll show you in just a bit. But a few examples are asking the model to include exploration or of alternative answers also works. Uh, you can also have it try different ways to get to an answer and then show you what it actually did. The reasoning of the LLM is therefore improved through combining a chain of thought with the requirement to try multiple methods, explore other answers or just question or just answer in drafts where it doesn't actually have to worry about getting the answer but might get closer just like a human would if you were doing homework problems or practice problems. Now obviously there's still limitations but this alone without any training can give you around 70% accuracy on the strawberry problem with a sample size of 10 and without prompting llama 3170b had 0% accuracy and ChatGPT4 omni had 30% accuracy. So the really big cool takeaway here is that applying this kind of basic structure a new take on this sort of feedback loop specifically with hints and prompting it to try different methods and effectively just doing what we've done for a long time, which is just feeding an LLM the output of its own prompt, you can get much better accuracy with these sort of novel problems like the strawberry problem, which has just been picked because it's a really interesting one that still stumps all these models for reasons that people don't necessarily understand. And again, it's important to note that when we look at these examples, this model isn't perfect. This is, this is literally like a weekend project someone put together. So it's not perfect, but it performs significantly better than other LLMs like GPT-4 Omni and way better than Llama 3170B would. And what's cool is Grok makes this possible because it just increases the speed of iterations that we're using to do all of this. So if you look at the strawberry example, we can see that it's decomposing the problem, just like O1 would tell you, it's telling you what it's actually doing in each step. And then eventually it gives you a final answer. Now, the funny thing is I've never seen one of these models just be prompted to consume this problem as if it was a leet code problem. Because the funny thing is I would bet you can find leet code problems that are just asking for, give me a dictionary as output after being given a string of characters that tells me how many characters showed up where, or like which ones were even or odd. And these models would just shred that. They would finish that in seconds and they give you a really great answer. However, you could also just write that as a potential hint and see what these models do with it. What's also cool is you can give it math problems. Another really interesting problem that has tripped up LLMs for some time, even the most advanced ones, is which is larger, a 0.9 or a 0.11, which basically is just asking the LLM if it understands the significance of one token being a decimal point and the other token being a number and whether it conflates those anywhere. And what's cool is this model actually gets it right, where 0.9 is greater than 0.11. Running this is also pretty straightforward. I don't have a grok key at the moment, so I might do a stream with this later in the week to show you guys how well this does work. The interface using Gradio is awesome, so this developer is done a great job working on that. And again, their GitHub will be in the description below. And I wanna show you a few other examples of this model being used. So obviously this is another Example of this being used to show how many R's are in the word strawberry. Uh, Rowan Chung had a really great write-up on this. And there's some other interesting examples where people have actually gotten different approaches to how this was actually solved. And it's also cool to see that that's also possible with this model and that it doesn't just kind of default to the same set of hints or the same set of methods in every single case. So I thought this was quite cool. I'm curious if you guys are going to run this locally or if you know, you don't technically have to use Grok, it's just faster if you do. Uh, in theory, you could run this locally pretty quickly if you just had multiple GPUs and you were just representing each agent on each GPU. But uh, I would be pretty impressed if one of you actually implemented that. I actually might try implementing it this weekend. So I'm curious what you think. Are you impressed by this? Do you think it's just kind of an interesting engineering example or demo? I think it's cool that at least from the benchmarks, even as simple as they were, it did still show that this model was pretty impressive and was more capable than just, you know, out of just an out of the box version of ChatGPT4 Omni. What do you think about Grok? What do you think about Transformers? Let me know in the comments below. It's always a really interesting read for all of us. So as always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.